In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at three tips on using backgrounds in your projects. Much of the time, we'll do what I have done on this screen. We'll create a project, and this one contains a video clip on track number two, and then I have a graphic of an arrow on track number three overlaying it, and I can play it, and I see the man on the phone, and I've made it smaller than the full screen, I'd like to fill the rest of the screen with a background. So what we tend to do is we tend to go to our media room, click on the down arrow, and simply click a color board. And so we'll take a color that we like and drag it on a lowered numbered track, like track one. And now we have a solid background around our, our image and around underneath our arrow. That's good, but uh, what if you don't want a solid color? Well, there's another thing that you can do. This tip number one is that the backgrounds are a great alternative to color boards. I'm going to click the down arrow and I'll choose the third item called backgrounds. Now PowerDirector comes with uh, my version approximately 10 backgrounds and if I right click on any of them and click on properties I see they're all 1920 by 1080 because these backgrounds are in a directory for my 16 by 9 project. If you are working in another aspect ratio, you will have the same images, but they will be in a different, uh, a different size. But if you're working high def, 1920 by 1080 is the size that you want for a background. I'll close that. So I can take any of these. We'll take this one here and drag it. And now we have this as a background. Uh, for our project. I'll do Control Z to undo that. We could see what it looks like with the uh, colored lights or we could see what it looks like with the raindrops. So those are different ways in which you can use the backgrounds and they're very nice. But what if you want more than 10 to pick from? The second tip I'd like to show you is that you can add to your backgrounds. We'll take that one away from our project for now. But it's not the way you might think. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and I'll say import media files. And I'll go to my media room here and I have a sample. I'll click on that. It's got the right proportions. I'll click on open. And what it does, it pulls it not into the backgrounds, but it pulls into my media room. And I can still use it and it makes a nice background here but what if I want something I can use over and over again that I don't want to have to load into my media library every time I want to use it I want it to be constantly available I want it to be in the backgrounds we'll do control Z to undo this and we'll remove it here what can I do? If I go to the background tab and try to load it again, it'll put it back into my media room, not into my backgrounds. There is no way built into PowerDirector to pull data images directly here, but there's a workaround. Let me show you. I'm going to right click on any of the uh, default backgrounds and then I'll click on Open File Location. That will take me, in this case, to the 16 by 9 subfolder that has all these backgrounds. Then what I can do is I can go to my normal file menu. And in this file menu here, I can go to the background that I want and drag and drop it into the folder. Now, it, it asks me if, if I'm, I want to be sure I can do this. PowerDirector does this so that you don't accidentally add or delete stuff you don't want into its default folder for backgrounds. I'll click on Continue, and now I find I have it here. Let me take another one and do the same thing. I'll drag this other sample into that folder. It will ask me, am I sure? And I'll click on Yes, and now it's in there. So now these two have been added permanently into my backgrounds. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to close the folder, but I don't see the backgrounds here. I need to close the program down and reload it in order to see them. I'm going to pause the video and we'll do that. 
Now I've reloaded PowerDirector. I'm going to click on the down area for backgrounds and now my two new backgrounds are available. I'll click on this one and put it over here and now I have it in here. It's not in my media library. It's in my background file where I could take this other one that I loaded and put that in as a background. So that's a very uh, uh, relatively simple way of adding to your backgrounds that will always be available no matter what project you're working on in PowerDirector. There's a couple other things that you can do with this window that I should highlight. The third thing that you need to know is you can either hide or erase items from your background uh, container here. If I right click on any of them I can click hide in library and it's hidden. I'll click on the one I imported here. I can hide that in the library and I don't see it. If I want to show them again, I right click on a blank space and click unhide all. That's the only option I have and that will bring it back. I will see everything. There is no delete option. So if I want to delete a folder, I can right click, go back to open file location and then that pops up my menu system. And here I can click on any of these, the standard ones or any I've added, highlight it and press delete. But there's a problem. When I click on continue, I'll get an error message. It says I can't do this while PowerDirector is working. So if I truly wanted to delete this from my backgrounds, I'd have to go ahead and close PowerDirector. And then I can say try again and it would delete it. So I have to, it's another insurance policy that they've done so you don't mess with the background folder uh, unless you're absolutely sure that you know what you're doing. So I'll cancel that for now and won't delete it. But those are some of the things that you can do in dealing with backgrounds in CyberLink PowerDirector.